Welcome. I'm currently sat above the primary school of Skol San Llechid and the village of Rachid. We have Bethesda down there and we have a Skol Dufferin Ockwen, the secondary school of Bethesda, just down there too. So we're a short walk above there in the Carnedai. And I'm going to use this site here primarily in this video to look at some issues around how do we manage our groups and how do we structure their learning and uh, look at some of the, the links to the curriculum. So we'll start off by uh, just taking this site here really and uh, thinking about how we can use it. So I've just accessed this site along this path here and uh, just take on a bit of a tour of this site. This is what we need to do as teachers or instructors to think about how we might be able to use the site safely for our groups and what are the learning opportunities presented by the place that we're in. So we're going to go for a little bit of a journey around and we're just going to look at some of the features of this little micro site. Let's go. As you follow me around the site, think about the site itself. Why is it like this? How and why was it formed? I'll give you a clue. There's a big hole in the ground up to the left of where I'm walking. So in this area here, we've got quite a lot of flat land. Looks a bit grassy maybe, actually mostly moss here. And we've also got the slate, kind of loose slate. So that provides an opportunity. We might be able to do something with that. Behind us, we've got a little stretch of wall. And uh, beyond, in the background there, another stretch of wall that's been uh, built as a retaining wall there to do with the slate quarry. And then over this way, which we're just going to head over to, we've got you know, more uneven terrain and loose slate. So let's go have a look. Note the loose slates that are around. Can you see the differences between them? Think about the significance of this and how you might use this. So just come to the edge here, we've gone over a little mound there and we can see we've got this really quite steep drop here. So if, you, if we come round and we can have a better look, we can see that uh, we've actually got a retaining wall here which drops away really quite steeply. So that's an issue, health and safety issue that we'd need to be thinking about in how we plan our activities and also for the, how we involve the pupils in the site something for the risk assessment there and if we move on around here we can see what are the other opportunities that we have. So here, the opportunity, brilliant views here down the valley. We've got the Gladerai Mountains that stretch down the valley, the Ogwen Valley, and meet with the Kanedai Mountains, which we're just at the bottom of here. So we've got a massive expanse of things that we can look at and talk about. And we've also got this loose slate here, which provides an opportunity. And we can see over here, A structure that some people have built probably really quite recently a um, little area to hang out but it gives you the idea that we've got this loose flexible material that we can be quite creative with so in terms of this site then we've got our opportunities for learning things that we can develop and exploit and we've also got these little health and safety issues as well we've got the flat area which is really useful but we've got this steep drop 
And thinking about the health and safety, those discussions around the pupil behaviour and the hazards needs to start back in the classroom and then you can bring it out here and involve the pupils in that risk assessment. Involve the pupils in identifying well, what are the hazards and how do they need to behave and then they'll have much more ownership of that. But of course starting it back in the classroom and then bringing it out here and applying it is really important. So having this amazing view here gives us plenty of opportunities to explore some of the questions in the humanities uh, new curriculum and lots of those could be right across the spectrum of humanities or they could be quite specific. What we're also doing is thinking about the John Muir Award and that discovery level in this, this video. So thinking about well some questions we could ask could be at that discovery level and could be quite open questions. So here um, on this card I've got uh, what questions do you have about what you can see and they could make a note on the card of that or you could do something a bit more um, artistic, less verbal, so draw something that takes your interest. Slightly more specific, draw a picture of a feature or a place in the landscape you would like to learn more about. And they could do it on that card or another bit of card. We can be more specific, so for older pupils or if we want to um, go in a bit more depth. So list the different ways in which slate is used in the valley. In order, list the five main land uses you can see from here and we've put the place there on the card ready for them to just fill in the gaps. So using these types of questions helps us to um, structure that learning. We can do that quite openly um, with more general questions or we can narrow it down to specifics. And we can do that beforehand or the pupils can take more ownership and responsibility for what types of questions that they're asking. Another way to do this, so that card is quite useful if you want them to note stuff, but if we want a bit more group discussion, we can look at things like giving them slips of paper for a group to discuss. So where would you like to explore more? Again, another quite open one there. Based on what you can see here, what would you like to find out more about? What is the biggest factor affecting the landscape we see today? How and why? More specific again, can you see any settlement patterns? How does the geology affect the landscape of the valley? By looking at the landscape, how do you think the industry and the economy of the valley has changed over the last 200 years? What evidence of different religions do you see during the day? So these could be quite handy if we wanted to have that group discussion and they could feed back to each other. What we, another option is, is with clipboards. So quite often people use clipboards, but the issues here, with loose paper on there, that's going to blow around quite easily in the wind. If you've got to change sheets, then some pupils will really struggle with that, especially in the wind. And if it's got no cover on it, put it upside down so it doesn't blow, it'll get covered in mud. So some of these with the leaf over the top, these are better um, in that respect, but there's more weight. So if you think about, if you're carrying a clipboard for every pupil, that's a lot of weight for you to carry. If you're asking them to carry it, then either can they manage the clipboard and the pencil and whatever else activity you're asking them to do? So just give it a bit of thought in your planning stage and how are you going to structure that evidence collecting and that recording of the information that they, they, they discover uh, and want to share beyond and reflect on. So we've just been looking at the wider landscape and how we can use that macro scale for learning. And now we can look at actually, well, where are we and what are the opportunities that we have here? So with this slate, uh, this presents an opportunity we can explore that slate in a bit more depth in terms of how it looks and feels. We can also use it as a material to allow us to be creative and we can, we can have some challenges that are more mathematical or more artistic in their basis. So we have an activity here that uh, NRW has done based about using uh, pebbles on a beach to make a tower 
So we could replicate something like that with this loose slate. Uh, we could set challenges, how high can you build the tower, and those kind of things. What I will say with using the, the slate here is that it is quite sharp. So if you're going to use um, a lot of hands-on activity on the slate, make sure the children have got some good gloves, really quite sharp edges there. And uh, it's possible to get children's gardening gloves and you can get a job lot for quite a reasonable price online. So probably worth doing, especially if you're likely to do some gardening back in school. And the other opportunity we have with slates, and if you've got some chalk, is that we can, we can start to use some chalk to do some drawing here. I've done a similar flower. You could do different types of things. You could uh, explore how people feel about the landscape, the enjoyment of the site. You could do something more map orientated. Um, and it also is that discussion about what is the effect that we have on the landscape and what, is, uh, what do we leave behind? If we're doing land art, should we leave it there or should we be able to get rid of it? This would wash off really quite quickly in the next rain shower. Thinking about us and leaving that trace, uh, there's, there's a saying, leave nothing but footprints, take nothing but photos. Is that the philosophy that we should be using? And, uh, you know, how much evidence is there of people and people leaving their impact on the landscape already? And is there an appropriate time and place to do these different things? Just to go back to um, these activities, hard to do things in gloves. Um, so here we've got another example from NRW of uh, an activity. Again, this one's looking at symmetry and patterns. And you can adapt this one, even though it's been written for purpose, possibly somewhere with sticks and so forth. We can adapt that to our material that we've got here, our loose materials. And you'll notice, just on a practical level, with these sheets that I've laminated, I've trimmed them down so that I've got plenty of laminate around the edge. This is much um, more likely to last a few showers without getting wet because I've got that big border of laminate all the way around. So a little tip for you to take away there. So we've looked at the bigger picture now, look at this opportunity that we've got just by getting up close and children really get into um, the world that's this micro world and having opportunities to explore that. And it can just be as simple as having a magnifying glass. So here we've got a really simple child's magnifying glass. What I have is a few of these, got a class set of these, they open up so you can have different levels of magnification. Still quite cheap and quite light to transport. If you've got older children, secondary schools, you may have um, more technical adult um, hand lenses such as this. But with all of them, it's really quite key that you get close. So you can see there that my eye is really close to the magnifier and I need to just move backwards and forwards to get it in focus. And you might have to do that with the children as well. So what I'm seeing here is I've got this big lichen here, this dog lichen, some grass, there's some moss there, a different type of moss and a starry moss and uh, at least two different sorts of plants just there in that little short sward. Here we've got the remains of a um, foxglove that has died down. So in the summer that would have had some nice bright purple flowers. And on the rock just here, this bit of slate, we can see we've got these beautiful yellow lichens too. So an opportunity to see how many different types of organism have we got. And just by having a simple hand lens or magnifier, we can open up that world to the children. If you want to record it, something you can do is to take your camera um, and take a photo of what they can see in the lens. You could do that with a phone or an iPad or a camera of yourselves and they can use that to share their experience from the day. Okay, so you may have spotted by now I've got my jacket on, so I've got cold just while being out filming here today. And that's what we need to be mindful of with our pupils as well, is that you know, if we just have static activities, they're going to get cold. So we need to break up the activities so we've got activities where they're moving and are active mixed in with static activities. 
be mindful that if you're talking and they're just sitting listening, then they're going to be getting colder faster than you are. So try and keep them active uh, and, and those times of talking quite minimal. And uh, as we say, building these activities, be aware of what's happening with that weather as well, which direction is the wind coming from. Try and think about getting shelter from that. Um, obviously in summer as well, you'll have to think about getting shade from the sun. So just one of the health and well-being activities that NRW have, have got up there is the fox and rabbit game. And I'll just try and explain that with these little people. So here's one of you, and you pick a, a fox, and you pick your, um, your home, your warren. And, and what you need to try and do is keep your warren between you and the fox the whole time. But everyone's walking around, so all these blue ones are all just different people in the group, as well as the yellow and purple one, they don't know. And you've got to try and keep your warren between the two of the, the fox and so forth but everyone's walking around and moving so you're going to keep that now this activity needs um, the pupils to be walking for it to work well but it is an active activity um, but you, you may want to build in activities that involve running I remember an interview with one of the boys that had taken part in some field work I did when I was doing my masters and the thing he'd enjoyed most was running on the beach with his friends. And if you think, how many times do we say to children, don't run, don't run, don't run, walk, walk, walk. But those children need a chance to run around. And so part of our role in taking them outdoors is to identify when can they go running around and to give those opportunities for them to have fun, to play games and to run around. Here you could um, identify an area with not too many trip hazards when you could actually play an active and run around game and ensure that they do have that fun. As we continue on our discovery journey, I have brought you to stand here by the big hole in order that you can look down on the site. We can consider different ways of organising and supervising activities. For example, if we stand to the right of the big grey slates in the middle, we can see the whole site with the help of two or maybe three assistants and you in the middle. You could organise a carousel of activities for three or four groups and you would be in a good place to oversee everything that was going on. So one of the things to consider is when you're on a journey, is the journey the learning experience in itself or is it enabling you to access different points where you're going to do your learning activities and the answer to that might vary according to what you want to get out of the day the age of the the pupils and so forth so if we think about maybe quite young children you know every, every few steps they're going to find something new of interest so maybe that's what you plan for and that's what you allow your timings to support and that you have quite a flexible approach to that so that they can lead that learning and have interest to them. You might want to think about how do you record that journey? Do you want to collect things? Do you want to take something with you that you can collect things in? Or do you want to take a stick so you can add things onto that journey so you've got a record of the things that they see along the way? Or it may be that your journey is taking you to specific places that you want to go to do the learning there so you're just moving through that landscape but you might like to think about how you structure that to make the most of that journey so you might want to set up before going on a section like this so we've got quite a narrow path here so that might be quite difficult to kind of get the group together to be able to talk about anything so maybe you want to set that up before you go along that section of path I've got quite a big open section here so maybe I, I bring the pupils focus to something in particular that I want them to observe or think about and so that they're brief before they do that section and then when you get to the next point then you can build on what they've they've observed or been thinking about when you get there. The other thing to think about is like here we might have a slope which will spread out that group especially if you've got mixed physical ability and interests. So think about well, how do you plan for that? What activities do you do on the way that will manage that differential in ability? Or do you have an agreement with the other staff that are with you about how you let the group disperse to what extent and how you bring that together? 
where's your positioning in the group? Do you allow some to go forwards and then uh, make sure that they stop and wait? But try and think about how can you promote learning along that journey and plan for that so that you're making the best out of that learning experience and maximising the potential for learning as you go along. So by now I've reached the top of Moel Vapan and this map here shows me that we're at a height of 400 metres and this map here is really good because it shows us the open land, it shows us the footpaths and the heights and it also shows some of the features, some of those archaeological features including these cairns which give the name to the mountain range of Carnedai and those of course are Bronze Age so that takes us through quite a long period of archaeology that we can consider when we're coming out here. I also have with me a 1 to 50,000 map, so we've got a different scale map and that's really useful for picking out the mountains and the mountain range. So here we can see that we've got the Gliderai mountain range heading down to the south and then turning east. And I can see those mountains over there, including the Darvach. And then closer, we've got the Carnedai. We've got that ridge here. And I can see Carned David and Ar Ellen here behind me. So using these tops is quite good in terms of being able to look at that landscape and place ourselves within the landscape and match up features with the map. However, we do need to think about the fact that especially if it's windy pupils will get cold quickly so we need to think about that in our planning and be ready to move on quite quickly if the pupils are getting cold. The other thing to consider of course is that um, depending on the weather you might not be able to see those summits and those ridges so definitely an activity to do when you have the opportunity and you might not be able to do it every time you come up here. So it's really important that we set aside some time towards the end of the session to review our learning before we get back to school. So in that session this is an opportunity to find out about what they've learnt, what they've enjoyed and that could be just simple questions in terms of asking them what they've got out of the day, what they most enjoy, what surprised them and that could be a simple discussion or you could do some bigger activity that delves a bit deeper into their experience or that encourages them to reflect on their learning and their experience a bit more depth. But that opportunity is there for you as much as for them so that you can assess what they've learned, what they've got out of the day. And it's important that you do it before you get back to school because once you get back to school, everything's happening again. You know, we've got various different demands on your time and uh, different pressures and expectations. And also the pupils have moved their mind on, so they're starting to look at something else. And you've lost that, that moment. So um, different ways that we can do this, one of them is to use this kind of idea of a bit of a line. So I'm just going to go and mark the ends of that for you. So we can use that scale in a number of different ways. One would be, uh, say, if you start off your topic or your series of sessions and ask about their understanding or confidence in something like, for example, the Carnedai, and then at the end of your session or a group of sessions, then you might ask them to revisit that. So at one end of the spectrum, you'd have they're not feeling very confident or they're not feeling very knowledgeable. At the other end of the spectrum, they feel they've learned a lot more, they're more knowledgeable. Of course, one interesting thing is that can happen is as you learn something about something you're not so familiar with, gradually you realise there's more to learn and so that that might affect where you put yourself on that scale. That same kind of model can be used by yourselves or pupils to ask kind of yes, no questions about any subject matter that you've covered. Um, or you could use it as a scale in terms of agree and disagree for, you know, something that has a matter of opinion or... Um, uh, you know, a bit more controversial as an issue and then you might be able to have that discussion within the group 
as to why they've placed themselves and why they've placed themselves there and to see if you can change some of the people's opinion. But definitely set aside that time in your planning, make sure you've got time to review your session, review your learning before you go back to school and allow yourself enough time after that stop to go back to school. So kind of work out how long that's going to take you or again, if it's to go and catch a bus, make sure you've got that time planned in to review that learning at the end of your outdoor session. Thank you for listening. I'd like to finish with a map that shows, marked in red, the circular route that I took when making the video. The blue line shows the route to Ysgol Llanllechid and the orange line shows the route to Ysgol Enjoy planning your journeys.